What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and it's Everton against Liverpool at Goodison Park on Monday night with a sellout packed crowd because Boris Johnson doesn't give a fuck about the Corona virus. Hello everyone. How are you, John? Well, I'm in shock to be fair. You know, I'd, I was unsure if we were going to be doing this video tonight for the simple fact. I think the whole country was unsure what was happening with the Premier League games and you know, nine out of ten countries have actually give a shit about their own population and give a shit about the people. Um, and for some reason, RFA, our Premier League, our government are doing nothing basically to slow this virus that's spreading like wildfire. You know, apart from them saying, wash your hands with soap and water and keep that British bulldog spirit and we'll get through this. Fuck off, you blonde-haired twat. And that's that. And that's that. So, obviously, Everton go into this game on the back of a humiliating 4-0 defeat at Stamford Bridge, a game that involved me going back to the fucking car, back to the vintage Network Michael D. Not Network Michael ID. It's Network Michael D. And has been since September 2018. Jesus. And... Or was it 17? Fucking hell. How long have we been going now, John? Jesus. Anyway, um, when I when I watched the game first, I was calm. I was relaxed. And then when I re-watched it, I got really angry with players like Sadibi and Sigurdsson. And basically anyone in a blue shirt, Pickford, just just it's just raw emotion because I don't feel like some of these players. I feel like Sadibi's bothered about playing for the blue shirt, but he's literally a second coming of Cuckoo Martina, just with a higher price tag. Then you've got Sigurdsson, who is oh, shit. Oh, no, he's not a different colour, is he? <laughs> Fuck, you know. Fuck, man. And you so say, you, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just... <laughs> <you're fine. laughs> it's, just it's just, it is what it is. We are, we are miles behind the top four. We are miles behind. And if there was ever a game that proved it, you know, we went to Arsenal, we should have won. I was speaking to an Arsenal fan, we should have won. I was speaking to a Man United fan, he said they got lucky. And then we go up against Chelsea, who are in the top four, unlike Arsenal and Man United, and they twat us. So it shows where we are. John, we go up against the Liverpool side that's just lost to Atletico Madrid, probably been effective with coronavirus from start to finish of that fan base and, and players. And I don't agree with the reason why, because that game shouldn't have taken place. But there you go. That's my opinion. What's your thoughts, John? Um, well, Liverpool are having a bit of a rocky patch. Um, and, you know, if Everton... Is it four defeats in six games, John? I think... That's, that's just, yeah, I think it's four in, four in five or four in six. They might have drew one. I'm not sure. But, you know, before the winter break that Liverpool went on, they were flying. They were still in cup competitions. Since the winter break, all they've got now is the league, you know. So, they have it a bit of a rocky patch. But it's going to be a hard game, Michael, you know. And we went through our four fixtures that we had coming up against these top teams. And we worked out maybe we might get seven points, was it, or something like that? Yeah, you, you, wanted, you wanted ten. Yeah, because we were playing well, you know. And I looked at Arsenal, who were hot and cold. I looked at Man United at the time who were hot and cold. You know, Chelsea haven't pulled up any trees really this season. So I give us a chance. The hard game for me was going to be Liverpool. Got one point going into the, the last game of them four. You know, and I've said this many times. I think it, Ancelotti's getting the best out of average players and it will change in the summer. But I will be honest now and say I think the Chelsea game last week proved to Ancelotti that there's a big job on his hands there and he knows there's big changes needed. Um, the Liverpool game's going to be hard. I watched a bit of it, a bit of the highlights today and 
Listen, Van Dijk's the best defender in the league for me, but what I did notice, if you run at Van Dijk, he can struggle sometimes if someone with pace is running at him. So yeah. if if we're going to hurt Liverpool anywhere, if we can hurt Liverpool anywhere, and as I said, Van Dijk's a fantastic player, we need to run at their centre-back positions because offensively, you know, we all know what they're capable of. Our defence has got to be a million times better than it has been in current weeks. But I'm going to say it now. I always let my heart rule my head when I'm giving score predictions, but I don't think Everton are going to get anything out this game. And I'm sorry for saying that, everyone, but, you know, I'm only being honest. Yeah, that's fair enough, John. Look, I, I completely understand. And this game would have been very different on Monday if it was played beyond closed doors. For me, if it was played beyond closed doors... Liverpool win this, hands down, no problem. It will be on the crowd. And look, I've criticised I've criticised a good at an atmosphere lots of times this season. But for the derby, we're always up for it, always. I expect us to get a positive result. Whether it be a draw or a win, I don't know. I, you know, my heart is telling me 1-1. But my head's telling me that maybe just the fact that Liverpool are maybe a bit down, maybe a bit you know, tired potentially from the from they put in a massive effort against Atletico. There's no doubt about it. They play they played well. They just couldn't score. So I genuinely believe we can win this game. And I would say two one. But I do gonna I'm gonna err on the side of caution and go one one. Now I'm one, I'm gonna give my team I'm just gonna give my team straight off the bat. I'll go Pickford, I'll go Leighton Baines, I'll go Yuri Mina, I'll go Michael Keane. I'll go Mason Holgate. That, that's my back five. I thought it might be. I'm also going with Fabian Delph. I mean, Nan in midfield, in the centre two, because you stick anyone else alongside him with foot. With foot. So I, I can't see how we win midfield. We don't win midfield in this game. But what has- I, yeah. So we go Dalph and Gomez as the centre two. Then on the right, on the left, we play Richarlison. On the right, we play Theo Walcott. And up front, we go Moyes Keane and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Because I thought Moyes Keane looked bright when he come on against Chelsea. What's your thoughts, John? Um, I agree with you keeping in your back four. I'm going to start with... Gomez in the middle with Delph. Again, I agree with you. But I'm going to put Keane, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison up front. And my wingers are going to be Walcott and Bernard. OK, fair enough. Plenty, plenty of pace there. And this is what I said about getting at Liverpool. If you can get at them, that's the only way we will win this game is with using pace against them. Because, listen, they've got height at the back with Gomez and you know, they've got Van Dyke. We're not going to win many headers, to be fair. So I think we're going to have to play on the floor more to get in behind them because I don't think we'll win many headers against them. You see, I've thought the other way to you. So I've thought more defensive. Richarlison is one of the best tacklers in our team. Statistically, he's one of the best tacklers in our team, which is why I put him on the left because he will track... Trent Alexander-Arnold on the right. The reason I put Walcott on <coughs> the right is because he will track Robertson on the left. Now, Theo Walcott is not good as good defensively as Richarlison. He's really not. But he will put a foot in more than Bernard. So that's, that's the reason I go with them in that position. I agree with you. The only thing is, if Luca Dean would have been playing left-back, I then put Richarlison on the wing, because I think Leighton Baines is a better tackler than Luca Dean. I think he's a better defender. But with having Baines there, it makes me a bit more confident at that left-back berth than what Luca Dean would be if he was playing. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You know, so, so where's where's our weak point in this game? You know, where were we going to get beat? Apart from everywhere. <laughs> well... As you say, the centre of the park, Gomez isn't up to speed yet, and you quite rightly pointed out the other day, before he got injured, he wasn't really playing well. No, he, wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't playing well before he got injured. 
but a, he was our most productive, influential midfielder in the centre. But he's not up to speed yet. I think, in my opinion, I think this game will, will bypass Gomez. You know, I think Fabinho's playing well. Um, you know, Mil- Milner's been playing well. You wouldn't think he was 34. Then you've got their front three, probably the best front three in the Premier League. The Wales are going to be won and lost. Fuck the high line off. And we have to stay tight. We've got to stay tight. Henderson is having a good season. I think he's back for the derby. I say this every game because our defence worries me. If we can stop the supply line to Mane, Salah and Firmino, we have a chance. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely think, look, if Everton can stop... If, do you know what? If Everton can stop Trent Alexander-Arnold and Robertson, we'll at least get a draw about this game. Because so much comes from their ability to play the ball inside or outside. So much because Salah and Mane, they create space for themselves. Now, if Leighton Baines is caught one-on-one with Salah, there's only one winner, and that's, that's Salah. So we're going to have to get tight and stop them getting the ball early. It means we're going to have to put a lot of energy in. And we already know that, you know, Liverpool have got an extremely fit side. They have. You know, they've been on fucking energy drinks that have given fucking steroids for all all season. But, you know, they're never going to be investigated for it. But it's a game that will be won simply by who outpresses who. Watford did it to Liverpool the other week. They, they out liverpool Liverpool. Everton need to out-Liverpool Liverpool. And if we do, we win this game. We twat them everywhere, all over Goodison, in your Mars bed, in the car park, at your sisters, at your brothers. We twat them everywhere. And I'm telling you now, mate, I will be fucking running up my street with me fucking nipples hanging out, buzzing. Honest to God. Just like your bird does after the night out then. Absolutely. She loves having them breasts out, telling you. Um, in all seriousness, though, we, we've had... We have eight days rest before we play. Liverpool played last night. Yeah. And we'll have coronavirus. Yeah. That will go in our favour, obviously. They put a lot of effort into it. It went to extra time, you know. And they have started to look a bit tired lately. So I think Everton will look the fitter team. But we've got to use that to our advantage. We've got to use the amount of time we've had off since the last game. And if we can, don't let them get the passing game going. Don't let them settle into the game. Get into them straight away. We may have a chance. Yeah. Um, A lot of people have questioned Jordan Pickford. A lot of people have have, have mentioned Jordan Pickford. Um, Any concerns about him going into this game? Because this is a game that notoriously, actually, Jordan Pickford has struggled in. I think he notoriously struggles in more games than not, to be fair. Um, If we had a decent backup, we had a decent backup, I'd have no problem dropping him. In fact, if we had a decent backup, I'd have no problem in him never playing in goal for Everton again. Honest to God, he's so fucking cocksure of himself. I actually think there's something mentally wrong with him. I've watched him where I sit. When when the ball's up the other end, I've watched him when he's standing there and he's fucking mentally tapped. There's something wrong with him. Yeah, and it's a, it's a little bit different to Tim Howard where he used to swear at himself. It's... It is. He's very confident, and, and we both know the story that when he come back to Goodison after the Euros or the World Cup, he, he's, he's, his head wouldn't fit through the fucking doors. Wouldn't fit through the fucking, you know, the fucking revolving doors, mate. Yeah, and, and a lot of people fell out with him over that because he was so cocksure of himself. And you mentioned Tim Howard there. The difference with Tim Howard and used to swear at himself is Tim Howard was a good class goalkeeper and gave the defence confidence was was confident coming for the ball, was good one on one when the opposition was running at him, was a good shot stopper. Jordan Pickford gives me no confidence whatsoever, so I dread to think what what confidence he gives the defence. Yeah, they don't make goalkeepers. I had this debate yesterday. They don't make goalkeepers the way they used to. They really don't. You know, 
you, you can think of some, we've had some good goalkeepers, even in the last 20 years, if you go, obviously we had Southall until mid nineties. I think Nigel Martin was a good addition as well. Thought he was phenomenal. We've had Tim Howard for 10 years. He, he did a great job for us. I don't put Jordan Pickford in the same bracket as any of those guys. You look at them three keepers you've just named there. Jordan Pickford is not good enough to lace their boots. Jordan Pickford pisses me off, and I think it's obviously plain to see that. And I've said this before. If, if, an, offer, way. if an offer comes in for them, you know, I think Ancelotti will sell him. I think Ancelotti seeing the other side of Pickford now as well. Yeah, I think I think the thing is with Ancelotti, he likes people to stay calm. After the 1-1 against Man United, he was obviously raging for a bit, but he wanted calm. When we lost to Arsenal, he wanted calm. Jordan Pickford doesn't give you calm. He gives you erratic. He gives you more emotion. Jordan Pickford is very similar to Joe Hart. Yeah. And that didn't work out for Joe Hart. No. And, I, and, and as horrible as it sounds, I don't think it'll work out for for, for Jordan Pickford. And I, I, and I hate saying that on any player. I always wish him the best. When I wear a blue shirt, I wish him the best. But I am done with Jordan Pickford. I truly am. Um, last thing then. Very last thing. How are we going to score? Well, you see, if, when you look since Ancelotti's come in, we, we score, we feel confident going into games that we're going to score goals in, in every game. You know, we didn't used to feel that with Silva. We are confident going into games that we, you know, we, we can hurt the opposition. So, how are we going to score? Look, for me, since Ancelotti's come in, I'm not going to say I want Walcott to stay, but I think Walcott's improved a bit since Ancelotti's come in. That's why I'd play him. Bernard's a better player at home than what he is away. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's got six in seven, I think it is, or something like that. You know, the Charles... He's the highest goal scorer in the league since Ancelotti's been in. In the last 10 games, he's the highest goal scorer with eight goals. So, what the way we can score is utilise our front players and utilise Dominic Calvert-Lewin as much as we can, get Richardson into the game as much as we can, because... You know, they're capable of scoring goals. I hope Dominic Calvert-Lewin doesn't get many one-on-ones because I think that's probably one of his weak spots. But listen, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I've been one of Calvert-Lewin's biggest critics in the past and he's impressed me. He's improved so much. Just think he needs to work on his one-on-one situations. If that can come, it won't be long before he's going to be close to being an all-round striker. Yeah, agreed. And and Dominic Calvert Lewin, I think, is twenty two years old. That will definitely come. One on one's composure, that will come. Um, I w- I'm going to give you a little bit of a stat. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to quiz you a little bit. I know this is a long preview. Don't fucking roll your eyes at me. But this is this is good. This is good. This. How many goals has Mohamed Salah got this season? Mm. Well, I don't think he's been as good this season as last season. I'd probably say Salah's in the league. Yeah. Eight? Sixteen. Still a lot, and I didn't think it was that. How many has Dominic Calvert-Lewin got? Is it 14, 13? 13. Yeah. How much did Mohamed Salah cost? 40 odd, was he 40 odd million? Was he? How much did Dominic Calvert Lewin cost? No, 100, some 100,000 or was it like 1.2 million or something? Was it exactly so? Fuck off, red shot, better value for money there. Fucking oh. Everton, Everton. And apparently, two years ago, Dominic Solanke was going to be better than Dominic Calvert Lewin uh, as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Here's another one. Here's another one. Who is. Liverpool's number nine. Firmino. How many goals he got? Nine. Eight. Less than that wing. Give a shot of the day. Everton. Everton. <laughs> um, scary stat, though. More importantly, and this is important. Um, based on teams that score first, 
in the games that Liverpool have played, they've scored first in 93% of them. So if Liverpool score first, we're fucked. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's I it. Think Liverpool's biggest threat for me is Mane. I think he's been their best player this season, attacking-wise. For yeah. me, he links, links it up in the middle. The way Liverpool's front three play, I think... I think of, I don't know whether Ancelotti would go down that road. You know, Liverpool don't really play with a striker, but obviously it works for them. Um, I have heard Timo Werner's going to them. Um, oh, that's my ass. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry about that, everyone. Michael, what a tit. Michael's just burnt a sausage and mash. It's just there uh, inform me there. So sorry about that, and he's back. Yeah, it stinks. Absolute. My house stinks. I've burnt the I've burnt the food. I'm gonna have to order a takeaway. You live on them anyway, don't you? I've been trying to be good, John. So yeah, you think Marnie is the best player. And I I've I've got a tendency to agree with you. I think you know, I think if, if I think, you look the season. I think if Liverpool's if Liverpool were to lose one of the front three, I think you could confidently say Salah would have been a big loss last season. Now, I think it would be Mane would be the biggest loss for them. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, so we're leaving it there. You think we're going to lose? I'll get shot down for this, you know, and I'll probably get called a pisshead again in the comments by fucking Alan the Blue or whatever his name is. Keep your comments off there like that, please. Because um, I'm not a pisshead. I have a pint when I go to the match. And I'm sorry, Alan. If you think that's me being a pisshead, then you'll have a sad life. Um, yes, so I'm going to go with 3-1 to Liverpool, unfortunately. Hope and prove wrong. But I think it's just going to be too much of a hard game for Everton. You know, Liverpool only need one more win after this to, to clinch the league. I'm just glad they're not going to win at a Cutterson now. And I hope they win it in front of an empty stadium and they can't have a fucking parade. Or even better still, the league gets scrapped with them having one game to go. <laughs> and that's it. And they'll have to wait 31 years then. Brilliant. Bye. <laughs> right, see you everyone.